Hello, in this video we are going to learn about the configuration space of mobile robots. These slides are based on chapter 2 of the book Mobile Robotics Mechanics Planning and Control by Kevin Lynch and Frank Park. In a previous session, we mentioned that a robot is a mechanical system that is composed of joints and links. The way that this robot can move the links uh, is based on actuators. The actuators basically generate forces and they also generate torques. Now we want to create a space where we can represent all possible configurations. By configurations, uh, we mean the specification of all the points of the robot. For example, if we have a humanoid robot, like this one over here, we know that this robot has some links and, and some joints. The, each link is composed by a set of points, but depending on how you set the joints, we can move from this configuration to this other configuration. Now we are interested into finding the minimum number of real values to represent all these points. So another important concept in this area is the number of degrees of freedom, which is the smallest number of real value coordinates needed to represent the configuration of a robot. Now let's talk about the configuration space or C space, which is a space denoted by big theta where we can abstract all the possible configurations of the robot. For example, in this humanoid robot, every joint has every pair of links is connected by a joint and we can denote like the joint 1 as theta 1, denote the joint 2 as theta 2, and so on. We can continue this process. In the end, we have eight uh, joints. The interesting part is like we can create a vector with all these, uh, the, all these angles and that will be create a point in the eight dimensional space and that space is what we call the configuration space so the configuration of the robot will be converted into a point and that will that point will lie on the configuration space the interesting part is like we can go in one direction but we can also go from the a space of all the possible configurations we take one point and uh, we set uh, that point into our real the simplest example is a door even if it is open or closed or just a little bit open we only need one variable to represent uh, how open their door is in this case, we represent that value by theta, uh, which determines the angle that the, the door is open. Another example is a coin. If we have a coin on a plane, uh, we, can, uh, we can have the coordinates of a point of the coin, and also we need to know the orientation of that coin we can show that only with these three parameters we can identify all the points uh, of the coin. A coin in the 3D space is a more challenging case. Now we need more variables to represent that coin. Not only the additional uh, third coordinate in the Euclidean space, but we also need to add two variables for the orientation of the coin. Now we need to know what's the roll of the coin, the pitch of the coin, and the yaw, right? And additionally, the three coordinates x, y, z. 
In the case of mechanical systems like robot arms, we know that the number of joints are related to the degrees of freedom. For example, in this case, we have one joint here that can be theta1, another joint here that will be theta2, another joint here that will be theta3, and a fourth joint here that will be theta4. So we can represent all the points, uh, all the points of this robot by only knowing these four parameters. In robot configuration, we mentioned that the specification is given by the minimum number of real values to represent all points. For example, if we have a car in a that can only move backwards and forward. And we want to know the distance with respect to a wall, this distance, right? Uh, this is a single coordinate that will give us the information of all the points in the car. If we know this point and we know the car that we are uh, dealing with, we will know all the points of the car. Assuming that we don't care about the the rotations of the of the wheels we we only care about the the main body of the car so for that case we know that this uh, parameter d just is just a a real number in this specific case since this is a distance it will be a positive real number but for other type of systems like um like joints right we mentioned that this here we have a, a value theta we need to represent that value in spherical coordinates or in a in a single dimension it will be a circle right uh, that value theta one will belong to the space of s1 that is basically a circle so this will be that value, theta1. With these two types of variables, we can represent different types of systems. For example, if we have a point on a plane, or like the location of a person in a map, we can represent it basically by two numbers that are the coordinates in x and y. In the case of a uh, of our robot arm with two degrees of freedom, we mentioned that we have theta one and theta two. Uh, we can expand and we can like um, create a range between zero and two pi for for theta one and the range between zero and two pi for theta two, uh, and we will create like a um, like a plane, like a section of, uh, like a subsection of a plane in the Euclidean space. However, this system is very particular because uh, two pi is equals to to zero. So in the previous case, we mentioned that theta one was represented by a circle. And now, when we have two um, two variables of this type. What we will have is something that is called a torus, that is basically the combination of two circles. We have one circle, this will be the representation of theta1, and the other circle will represent theta2. So every configuration from this robot arm will be represented as a point on the surface of this torus. This is really amazing how we can transform like very complicated systems and very complicated robots where they have many points into uh, just 
uh, simple variables and we know how to how they behave and we have been studying that for many years so that mapping from complicated robots to an abstract an extra space is really an amazing field in the book we can find other types of systems like an spherical pendulum that is basically a, um, an, a different type of combination of of the s1 times s2 and the difference here is like we will represent points on the sphere right so for this spherical pendulum what we will have is a, a point or a sphere that will represent the orientation of that arrow there are other type of systems like the rotating sliding knob that it, it has an angle here and it also can slide in this direction and when we see the abstraction we will see it as a point on, on a on the surface of a cylinder we have been talking about the abstract configuration space but what we are interest, interested in is actually the task space which is a subspace of the configuration space where the robot is going to perform uh, its task right for example if we have a ground robot on a vineyard for monitoring we have the robot that can move and if we abstract just like the the location of the robot and how it can move uh, the coordinates and the robot might be in the um, in the plane right but the robot is interested on monitoring the vineyard so what we will have in the end is just a subspace that will be monitored at where the robot is going to move this area in pole will be the task space during the next sessions we will study how to navigate in the configuration space we have a point a and, and another point b the both are in the configuration space but we need to find a way to move through that configuration space we will have to find uh, paths and trajectories that will move the robot from one point to the other additionally we will also study how obstacles can affect the configuration space the obstacles will generate uh, holes in that space where we cannot go through and we will try to understand what we can do and on this type of cases see you in the next session